Social network analysis in R. Why am I the one giving this talk? Uh, before I entered into grad school, I used to work down in DC for the Department of Defense. We did a lot of computational social science, and as soon as the powers that be realized that bad guys were not forming as hierarchies, they were forming as networks, we had to learn network analysis, and that was my, I'd done a lot of that in my undergrad, so I got involved in it when I was down there, and it just sort of took off you know, from 2001 onward. It was all networks, and it still is. Um, but while I was down there, one of the things that I never used was R, because anyone who's ever worked with the federal government knows that the federal government hates to use any software that it can't pay for. Uh, it's, it's just a, 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 if, if a general sees that his software is broken, if there's not a phone number that he can call and yell at someone, he does not want to be able to use it. So R never really got involved in anything that I did. Uh, I did fight tooth and nail when I was down there to try and get Network X and Python into the Department of Defense. And before, shortly before I left, I was able to do that. So a lot of my background in network analysis is in every other patch except R. So in me giving this presentation, part of doing, you know, I've been using iGraph and R for about six, seven months now, but this was a learning experience for me. So you guys can tell me if I'm the best person to give this presentation or the worst. Um, we'll find out shortly. So what are the things I'm going to go over? First, I'm going to sort of, why would we do SNA and R? There's a lot of tools out there. What makes R better? We'll go over some quick pros and cons. And then, because I'm sort of a lover of Python and NetworkX, I decided it would be a good time to actually compare the two. So we do some benchmarking uh, to some CPU-sucking kind of algorithms in network analysis, and we see how they stack up. Then I'm going to go over two examples using iGraph, how to do just real basic, quick and dirty uh, identification of key actors in a network, and then I'll go over some visualization because I think one of iGraph's and R's strengths in terms of it being a packaged network analysis tool is that it has pretty good visualizations. And then at the end, I just have a list of some tutorials and then some helpful experts that are out there, some of which uh, are in the room. So the way that I see it for network analysis, you have two ways of cutting the landscape of tools. There's different types of tools that can that are either standalone applications that exist as a compiled piece of software on your on your computer and they just have what they have in them with windows and menus and a GUI and it's really pretty and a little easier to use. And then there's the modules and packages that are either language specific or um, use specific. So there's that first cut. And then the second cut is really sort of the audience or the intent of the package. So some packages are intended for a very basic audience. They just want to do some very basic centralities, maybe some visualization. And then there's the more advanced stuff. So on this list, you know, I'm not going to go over everything that's on here, but you know, for the standalone basic applications, I don't know if anybody's ever seen an analyst notebook, they uh, you know, purport that they're an advanced tool, but from my view, it's just a, a link analysis chart. That's all it really does. Um, and then sort of the basic modules and packages, there's some stuff in Python that's very, um, you know, just some basic stuff, even some macros for Microsoft Excel that can do very basic network analysis. Um, then when we get into the advanced, you know, anyone who's ever done some network analysis probably seen UCI Net. It's a very useful Windows uh, tool developed um, at UC Irvine. Now the guy that develops it, a uh, business uh, business school professor down at University of Kentucky. Um, PIAC, which is these two are somewhat closely related. This is PIAC is usually used for much larger networks than UCI Net can handle. Uh, another tool that I like is called Network Workbench. It's developed out of the University of Indiana at Bloomington. Uh, it's meant to be um, modular in that it, they, their intent is to have other users develop modules for it and then put it in so that sort of a community-driven application. Uh, but we're going to skip right to the advanced package section down there. Uh, iGraph clearly falls into that. We're going to talk a little bit about NetworkX uh, in the next section. And then for the Java developers in the room, uh, Jung is a very complete uh, Java package for social network analysis. And just stop me at any time if you have any questions or I say something wrong and it offends you. Uh, so what are the pros and cons? The pros of doing SNA and R. There is an enormous amount, considering that it's just one language, there is an enormous amount of packages and different tools that exist in R for people to use. If there's any graph theorists in the room, uh, the Boost Graph Library, I was just told by by uh, someone in the room that this is now there's now a binding for this in R. It's an immensely useful package. Um, there's another tool other than iGraph that a lot of people use to do SNA and R called 
called just SNA. Um, then they have stuff for simulating, you can simulate exponential random graphs, simulate a bipartite network using these tools, and then there's things that are very specific. So if you're dealing with weighted networks, you can use a package called Tnet. Uh, basically, there's a lot of stuff out there, much more than really any other language has because of the way R is and the user and the community likes to develop a lot of stuff, and that's just an advantage to R in general, and that applies also to SNA. Another, as we're going to talk about, uh, are the visualization techniques. So I know this is a little small. Let's get in here. So you know we have you know a lot of different ways to, to visualize networks. We'll talk a little bit more about this in examples. But iGraph has a lot of cool visualizations that you can do right from the command line, um, save in high quality for uh, publication or presentations, and I really like it. And then finally. And I don't know if anybody, if that might be hard for people in the back to see, but one of the most, one of the nicest things about doing SNA and R is that SNA is, is statistics like anything else. So a lot of times you're going to want to do just plain old statistics on the data and apply that to what you're seeing in the network analysis. And if you're doing it in R, it's all under the same hood. So you don't have to do a linear, linear regression in one thing, take that data and bring it into your SNA tool. You can do everything right in R, and that, that makes things really nice. And I'll show an example of this as part of the visualization that I'm going to do later, where I do that. So what are the cons? Well, like anything in R, R is a language written by statisticians for statisticians. So the network analysis packages in R are written by SNA experts, or for SNA experts. So it's not a great way to introduce yourself to doing network analysis. I would suggest using maybe one of the standalone packages, or standalone applications, UCI net, very good for novices, but are a little bit harder, and I just, you know, I was looking through a lot of the documentation that's probably too small to read in the back of the room, but one of the, one of the very famous realizations in network analysis were structural holes. What are they called? And, and, and in iGraph, it's called Burt's constraint. That's just another name for it. And really all that's measuring is redundancy of ties. But the definition here makes that, you, you sort of have to know what that is to be able to understand, all right, that's what we're measuring here. This is a very technical view of what we're doing. And then another thing, I, uh, this is a less, this is not a really extreme con, but I wanted to throw it up there because I, I was noticing it and I've been noticing it, is that because, because of this pro, you get a lot of duplication and, interop and, and interoperability issues when, you know, one package will have something to do one very specific network analysis technique, the other one doesn't, but you want to do something in iGraph and only SNA does it, so you have to switch things around. Luckily, because you're in R, these things can be easily handled just by loading multiple libraries, but it does get to be a little bit annoying. It'd be nice if there was a little more coordination, a more of a standard package, so that was just something that I thought I might mention there as a comment. Okay, so now we're gonna so now I just want to show a quick uh, comparison between iGraph, which is also available in Python, but the iGraph in R and then NetworkX in Python. We'll do some quick, uh, I generated a random uh, Barbarcy Albert network, which is just going to be a, uh, a network with a lot of hubs, hub, hub structure, 2,500 nodes, just under 5,000 edges, so not huge, but not tiny, and we'll see how these two packages perform. So first we're going to test between this. That's generally a, a CPU, you know, it, it shoves in the CPU a lot for big networks. Uh, the code, not really important, more of a takeaway for people who are interested in, in learning how the, learning the syntax for iGraph. So we just use the system.time technique that I think Shane went over a couple months ago to get the runtime on these. We do the same thing in Python, and yes, R is considerably fast, uh, which is good. We want R to be fast. Now we're going to do a, a, a front per minute Rheingold force directed layout. This is a, a visualizing algorithm that tries to force the, force the nodes and edges to show the balance of the network structure, but also not have any overlapping edges. The, the idea behind this is trying to make the most visually appealing uh, uh, visualization of network data that the computer can do given you know, 50 iterations. So here, I set the iterations at 50, I could have done 5,000 and it would look slightly different, a little prettier, but for the sake of just this test, I did 50, and yes, R is much faster again, considerably, over a minute for Python, and just, just nine seconds to do the same thing in R. 